Hey guys, Ashby at Ashby Farms, and out here today I want to show you how we make our queen castles. So my dimensions are kind of custom for me. I make all my own equipment. We run 15 and an eighth inside diameter, and then total outside diameter here to here is 20 and an eighth. And that allows me just a little bit of wiggle room when we have a frame gives us about a total of an eighth of an inch on both ways and then the reason I go 15 and an eighth on this inside diameter is so that we end up with about a quarter inch on the outside wall here and here and that allows the bees to police for small hive beetles um, obviously we're in central North Carolina we have a lot of problems with small hive beetles so that kind of addresses the dimensions. Um, I run our queen castles are 10 inches deep and then they've got a bottom on them. I have all my wood custom milled, it's one inch thick. So to show you as well, we run three grooves. It's a quarter inch, which is the two dado blades. And I run them the depth, uh, which is five eighths this way to the uh, to the edge of the bar and that'll come into play here in just a couple minutes so as far as our queen castles go we're going to ultimately end up with four two frame boxes um i drill four holes here and i put a staple on either end and a staple on both sides of this hole and it's eighth inch hardware cloth like this it's metal building these things long term the box is wax dipped first and the ultimate goal of these holes is to kind of mimic a double screen bottom board so that this once filled with our four splits is going to sit on top of a, a 10 frame double deep the heat like last night it was 43 degrees it's april the 26th so it's still cool nights so i want that heat to rise up through from the lower colony and keep our queen castles warm because as we make those splits there's only going to be nurse bees left in here all the foragers are going to go back home so the brood has to stay warm so we're utilizing the strength of the colony below to keep these warm uh, we basically have a hole on all four sides so if we look in here we've got a hole here a hole here one there and one there that's our entrances to the four colonies and they are all if you look directly at this they're, sh they're, they're drilled at an upward angle so that rain can't get in. I do all the, all the entrances that way. Um, probably like maybe a 30 degree upward angle. So next step is we cut Luon. Luon is a real uh, thin plywood. It's five millimeters thick, which when you, if you look right here, it slides right in. Just enough wiggle room with that quarter inch. Still, still a little bit of wiggle room. And this is a good example. Um, so if you look down in here, this sits completely flush with the bottom. So the goal is that one hive can't attack another hive. And then you'll see that while this wood has shrank about a 32nd of an inch here, this is flush with this all the way across. So when we put a solid lid on there, then the bees can't, you know, this queen can't go over the wall and fight with this next Queen right here now something that I screwed up with on you know, my measurements and a good example is right here some of the wood wasn't fully dried um, so we ended up with with a slit right here so Corey suggested suggested that we cut a shim and our shims fit right down in there we make them 12 inches long so that no matter which side we put it on you see this excess right here we can't screw up it's kind of screw up proof so if we put it there still no matter where we put it that would be the way that the queens would would go hive to hive so here we've got deep found or deep frames um i like to use uh acorn foundation this is the double dip double wax dip and when we're heading out to the bee yard like today we take them full because ultimately i'm gonna take eight blanks out and put eight two or, or eight frames in we prefer to be somewhere in the neighborhood of late we always want to use late stage 
calf brood and we like to have we call them you know foodie broodies but it's a it's going to be a frame where you've got you know a ring of pollen calf brood and honey on the outside edges we like to see two of those or this time of year if we get like one frame is just wall to wall calf brood then we'll pull a frame of food with it make sure we've got pollen and uh, nectar in there and then once we pull our splits a lot of times especially like if we've identified the queen we just put her in a queen cage i'll shake the majority of the bees now think of it this way i'll shake the majority of the bees this way off the frame and that way the bees get distributed across all four colonies so once we've done that we take our queen cells we insert a queen cell uh, we use the jzbz cups with the bright orange queen cell protectors so basically we're running two frames plus a queen cell we check back somewhere 17 to 21 days later depending on the schedule and the queens can go out, get mated, and come back. So, with we we run pallets, so we can only have one queen castle per two pallets. Because if you have them side by side, then this colony and this colony's entrances butt up next to each other. So, somebody was like, "Well, how do you you know what's the chances that a queen will come back to this location going the wrong hive?" So what I did, I got on Amazon, again, Corey's idea. Um, we got 100% um, plastic poker playing cards. It was like 20 bucks for four packs and that gives me 200 cards, which covers me for 50 queen castles, four entrances each. The benefit is, is I can give a, you know, a club, a heart, a spade and a diamond on each side. And we just use a staple gun and i'll just put it like this and then she knows when she's doing her orientation flight she's the queen of clubs and then she knows she's the three of diamonds and that distinguishment helps the bees get home to the right colony um, we have a real good success rate uh, with our queens that way i don't know if that's exactly works but i like to think it does and, and then as well you know all this is wax dipped wood so the wood itself looks different too but when you've got so many bees in a yard, you know, you got 50 hives in it. We run most of our apiaries, like 50 colonies to a yard. Um, it just kind of works out that way. So that's how we build our queen castles. Um, it's a real convenient way. When, we, when I look at the cost of these, so like you, you see the mini mating nukes, that is not the, the styrofoam ones that come in multiple colors. I think that it's a great idea, but they're like 20 or $25 a piece. Um, I did total cost on everything and this box right here is right around $14. $14 gets me four two frame colonies. My equipment is standardized here. I don't have to trade new frames and rework them and everything. It's, you know, frames are swap for swap because uh, we run deeps on everything. So um, when you look at that, I mean, you figure that's $3.50 per two frame colony versus 20 or $25, suddenly this becomes very cost effective. So, you know, we can run 50 queen castles a week produces us 200 potential new hives per week. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, that, that's, that's a, a, a pretty good uh, income stream for us selling queens. Of course, you know, we get 70%, 80%, depending on the time of year. Um, but we're able to expand our apiary really fast on very limited resources. If we come back, you know, 17 to 21 days later and we open them up and we've got a successfully made a queen, um, you know, let's say that we had one full frame of, of brood. What well, hatched out? Um, the, there's not a lot of bees in here that turn into foragers in that amount of time. So that gives her a chance to use all those polished cells and relay so all, all we've got to search for is a two frame colony find the queen marker they'll swarm on us really fast after that so we go ahead and take two frames move it right into a five frame nuke give them three more blank frames now we can walk away for three to four more weeks come back move it from a five frame to a ten frame box um, basically we're using our nectar flow here to our, our pinch point is drawn wax so this enables the the main colony picture this if you guys
got a 10 frame double deep. Um, we're stealing eight frames out of this box or eight frames total. And the way I like to do is we leave all the bottom boxes with a frame of food and three frames of brood. Any extra food that we don't steal into our queen castle gets left. But at the end of the day, eight out of the 10 frames in the second box are brand new blanks. So in the three weeks that the queen castles are working to get queens mated and laying, then this, the parent colony is now working on the second story of blanks. We're utilizing that workforce to draw out our blanks up here so that when we come back in four weeks, um, you know, we've got, I don't know, maybe six or seven of the frames are drawn out, the resources are rebuilt, and then as soon as we move these successfully mated queens to our nukes, we repeat the whole process again. Our goal is to do those same splits April, May, June, and July, and um, that's how we make a lot of colonies from a few colonies. We're not in the honey business, we propagate bees. So um, I hope that helps, gives you a little bit of information on uh, our apiary, how we do things. Uh, I'm Ashby with Ashby Farms, got Corey behind the camera. We thank you guys for watching. If you like the channel, please subscribe, um, send me a like, and y'all have a great day.